Welcome back. Normally in this extended segment, we cover a variety of news, but we're going to start off with an interview today. You might remember my guest from last week. He's the host of the No Agenda Show, and his name's Adam Curry. All right, thanks for joining us again, Adam Curry uh, from MTV back in the day, and also running his own podcast, which has got 800 and something episodes, uh, the, the No Agenda Show, or it's No Agenda Show. You can find more information on, on noagenda.com. Now, Adam, uh, first question here. I actually went and listened to the show after you appeared on the Alex Jones Show with Max Kaiser, and you mentioned you were packing heat. Is that true or false? <laughs> well, let me say, let me just set it up properly because uh, Max and uh, Stacy said, oh, you know, uh, Alex wants you to come and, and, and join us at InfoWars. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and you'll be picked up in the van. I'm like, well, I'm going to get a hood on my head or what's going on? And they said, oh, this guy's walking around. They got, you know, they got weapons everywhere. I'm like, Okay, well, and maybe we'll just take something along just in case. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was definitely carrying, um, but uh, I didn't see much. Uh, you guys are very tame. It, it was uh, wasn't all that bad. Well, I do keep my gun at my desk right here. It's a judge. Oh and, well, uh, hold yeah, on so. a second. I always have my judge at the desk. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> it's a great weapon. And you know what's even better though is if you get the uh, if you get if you put these in. These are the four ten shotgun shells. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god, you put that in. It's very simple. You know, just point in the general direction, like, eh, yeah, over there, bird shot, good. You Literally know, a gun for blind people. I mean, all you have yes, to do is aim in the direction. Averted. Exactly. And you're going to hit it. Always nice to meet a fellow judge old owner. There you actually, Alex came in one day and ha holding a judge and said, you need to go get one of these. So I have one right by my desk at a, a little instant access safe. In fact, there's several of those all around the office. But yeah, we are, are carrying, we have a vault of guns in another nope. room. We're definitely ready for anything that could come uh, in, into the studio at all. Well, I would, <laughs> good. I, I, I know where to go when, uh, when it all hits the fan. Yeah, we have storable food too. So we'll, we'll be hey, good. Well, I got some of that. You know, I, I, as I told Alex, I got, you know, early on I was listening to the show uh, and I got my, my water filter. I got my MREs. I got my one acre crisis garden. I've been, I've been a fan for a long time. Yeah, excellent. Well, let's get into this Russian thing. I think we finally put it to bed with, you know, every time they came out with a new angle, a new article, it was able to be disproven by another source or by, you know, even asking the president, the president disproved, the story a couple times, but then also then the White House would come out with a, well, we think they definitely were involved in it. I mean, where are we now finally uh, a couple weeks after this whole Russian fiasco of, of you know, hijacking our elections? Where, where do you think that stands now? Do you think people really believe that they that they hacked the election? Yes, I think they I think a lot of people believe that uh, at least uh, a, a large portion of uh, the United States and probably all of the rest of the world, uh, Europe for sure. Um, you know, the uh, the Russian story as it relates to the election, you know, of course, the election, it was first, it was, you know, Comey, and then it was white men, and then it was uh, women, and everyone was to blame. Uh, and now it's uh, Russia, although that may be uh, ratcheting down a little bit, I have no doubt that Russia will remain the big boogeyman. And this is being driven mainly by uh, McCain and by Graham, uh, the senators, and they are warmongers. And their whole idea is, and because of course, what Trump is doing is he's right off the bat, he's saying, oh, hold on a second, military industrial complex. You guys are a little expensive with your $4 billion aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, you know, it would probably be half. I've been in aviation for a long time. Um, and then, you know, also talking about the, uh, uh, about the F-35. So this is, uh, you know, you're hitting people in their pocketbooks where it hurts. Uh, so I think that we still need to have a, a common enemy, and that will be Russia for a long time. It was, it was Al Qaeda, then it was ISIS, and then it was ISIL, then it was ISIL, ISIS, Daesh, uh, and now it's Russia. Russia is the bad guy. And um, um, I think the warmongers are going to continue to point out Russia as horrible, horrible actors. And I hope that um, our president-elect stays very, very safe, uh, particularly if you have the CIA possibly against you, although I think FBI is, and I, and I know there's interagency uh, issues. There always have been. Uh, it's usually about money, but CIA and FBI are no friends of each other. Uh, I hope we can keep him safe. You know, there's, uh, there's a lot of people who uh, uh, will not benefit from his deal making. That's true. But there's also a whole bunch of people that are going to benefit, I think, and looking at the Amer average American worker. How about worker, the American people? Yeah. I think they're going to benefit greatly. From what I've seen so far, he's been able to not even become president yet and bring in jobs. He hasn't been sworn in and People are saying they're going to reinvest. Uh, the Japanese multi-billionaire uh, has already started. It looks like investing in the United States. Uh, he's a telecom mogul, among other things. But I really think that at this point, uh, somebody put this out on Twitter and they said, first, they, they tried to stop Lincoln because, you know, he won the Electoral College, but, you know, the popular vote was close. Then they tried to tell Congress to overturn his election. And then they shot him. And it was the Democratic Party that did that. They took out Lincoln. So these people are definitely not above going after Trump in that capacity. But I think it's smart what he's doing. He's having a mix of private security and secret yeah. service running his affairs. And I think that's a smart, uh, smart thing to do because he's definitely, if anybody is in danger of being taken out, the last time we, you know, Ronald Reagan was a populist type candidate who, 
he made it barely a year into his administration yep. before he was shot. And, and uh, you know, I grew up in the Netherlands, and although I took a detour um, in the U.S., I was born in the U.S. Um, uh, for MTV, et cetera. Uh, in uh, end of 99, I moved back to Europe, and uh, at the time, and there was a politician in the Netherlands, and his name was Pim Fortuyn, professor, openly gay, very, you know, high, high intellectual. And he was uh, basically telling everyone in the country, we have to stop the Islamification of the Netherlands. Um, and he used words such as, it is a backwards religion, uh, et cetera. And two things happened. Uh, a, a friend of mine, Theo van Gogh, who was a filmmaker, a descendant of the great uh, uh, Van Gogh, uh, we say Van Gogh, but the Van Gogh, the painter, um, he did a movie uh, with Ayan Hirshi Ali, uh, and it was called Fitna, and it was about uh, how women are treated under Islam, and it did not fall in, uh, in good graces. And he was in Amsterdam, of all places, gunned down with an AK-47. Then uh, the perpetrator uh, jammed a knife in his chest with a note attached to it of, you know, a hit list. Uh, so that was one. And then uh, Pim Fortuyn, his, uh, his party became you know, very popular. The country loved it. Um, he was uh, two weeks away from winning the election and he was assassinated, uh, of course, by some crazy person, as it always happens, a crazy animal activist, just to make it even nuttier. Um, and his party won posthumously. Um, and I guess the point that I'm making here is that when it comes to uh, radicals, or you can call them nationalists or whatever you want to call them, or of course, far right Nazis, uh, as they are seen, and we're seeing them everywhere. We have uh, Farage in the UK, we have Le Pen in France, uh, we have uh, Beppe Grillo in uh, Italy, we have Trump in the United States. Um, you know, the governments around the world who have a history of uh, getting rid of them in nefarious ways. And they always seem to have tied, uh, you know, you can tie these people to central banks, or there's always some little trail leading back, and uh, there's a trail leading back to uh, the Bushes with the first assassin, Hinckley, the brother, uh, one of the Bush brothers was friends with uh, the brother of Hinckley. So it had breakfast with him or had a dinner with him a couple days before. Yeah. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So, yeah, and that was the same side. So who knows uh, the, what's the going good, on the with, good news with though, Trump. Rob, The good news when it comes yeah. to, you know, the military industrial complex, the people actually serving in the military, and I know a lot of them, uh, I went to Iraq in 2003 with the Dutch Marines. And uh, so I met a lot of people, have a lot of, built up a lot of contacts over the years. The people in the military who work in the military they really like Donald. Well, first of all, they despise Hillary Clinton. That it just became rampant is really unbelievable. And I, and no one really talks about the votes coming from our military personnel. But I think they were quite uh, well oriented towards Trump. Uh, they really like him, and they have high hopes for him. And um, particularly how he's been uh, at least uh, talking about how we're going to take care of our veterans, et cetera, and have uh, good materiel and all the things that they need, um, and probably stop going uh, doing starting crazy wars. Uh, so that's the good side of it. The money side is troubling. Yeah, that is. But let's, let's look at his pick for Secretary of Defense, Mad Dog Mattis. Uh, we put up a video earlier um, in the week, or it was late last week, maybe over the weekend, where we had uh, different Marines send in what they thought about Mad Dog Mattis. And these guys seem to have the utmost faith in this guy. He's a warrior monk. He never got married. He devotes his life to looking at war in different angles. That doesn't mean he's a warmonger and wants to go out and kill people. But he goes, have a plan to kill people, whoever you may meet, which means... You better have your plan wherever you're going. And, and I, he proved it in the, in the uh, surge. So I'm hoping a guy like that, you know, unlike Donald Rumsfeld, is not going to be committing troops to war unnecessarily. Uh, I think he probably won't. And that seems to be the overall idea is not to start uh, lots and lots of wars. Um, uh, I don't know much about, I have certainly never met him. I don't know much about him. I do know that uh, he pretty much never watches television. He reads uh, lots and lots. He's a reader. And you're correct that he studies, uh, you know, all the great battles, the strategies, um, and he's uh, he always has a quote on hand. Uh, he seems like a like a, a great, you know, yeah, like like a, a guy who would be very very good. Certainly not a pencil pusher. You know, if I've heard anything from um, from my uh, my contacts in the military and intelligence, they despise the pencil pushers. So you got an Ashton Carter, our current uh, Secretary of Defense, pencil pusher. You got Brennan, CIA, pen uh, uh, pencil pushers. These are all just pencil pushers. And, you know, so maybe it'll be interesting to have some people with some real experience in there who know one thing, you know, maybe uh, you, uh, you stay safe by not starting wars. Yeah. And as we saw, I, there was an article in Daily Mail last week about the, the CIA agent who interviewed Saddam Hussein. And he got he goes, man, we had Saddam all wrong. He yeah, thought 9-11 was going to bring the United States and Iraq closer together because they were secular. They despised terrorism, Islamic terrorism. So he's like, hey, this is, he thought 9-11 was, was going to be good for relations because he goes, we were ready to help them out with the war on terror. And so what do we do? We invade their country. We didn't even try to talk to them in a, in, in a diplomatic sense. It was like, no, you know, uh, George, little George wanted revenge for 
Uh, he thought they tried to kill his daddy. So it, we were just going to go all in or go all the way, as George Carlin says. And, and, just, and of course, and of yeah, course that war was actually started based on the premise of fake news. There it you was go. the aluminum tubes. Mm -hmm. And it was consensus in the, uh, within the, uh, 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 the intelligence community. 14 agencies said, oh, we're pretty sure the tubes are there. You know, they all signed off on it. Good to go. It was, you know, based on faulty intelligence, which came through the New York Times, I might point out, through a reporter from the New York Times. And it turned out to be not true. And it turned out that that was, you know, and it now was just joked about, like, you know, Bush was joking about it for years. Oh, well, couldn't find him. In uh, fact, he, he made a joke to the CIA agent saying, hey, what, do we have anything on the anthrax files? <laughs> and yeah. laughed. And the guy's like, I got sick to my stomach because I was thinking about the 4,000 men who died. And if you go back and look at, um, I think it was uh, General Wesley Clark, pretty famous, you've probably seen it, where he said there was a plan to, to pretty much take out seven countries mm -hmm. in, uh, in a number of years and included, of course, Syria. It included Somalia, uh, included uh, Lebanon. Uh, Iraq, Iran, um, you know, so they're, they're getting up there, you know, and I don't think that plan has ever really, ever really stopped. If you look at the people who want to have control over mainly the resources and have traditionally used the state department to arrange for the uh, resource extraction department, the, the department of defense to do our bidding. Yeah. And you know, that plan is sort of like the Northwoods. It never really got passed. It wasn't this official document, but yet the philosophy laid the groundwork for the people in, inside the agency. Well, we have this plan. We don't really talk about it. And it's not public, but this is what we're going to do. And we're going to steer our, our ship in those directions because these, you know, the, the United States as a ship, you know, if you were to look at it as a ship, it takes a long time to turn into a direction unless you do have one of these events like a 9-11. Do you think it's any possibility there will be an event like this under a Trump presidency? I think there's always a possibility for some crazy event uh, that is misused for whatever is necessary. But really, if you look at what's happened since 9-11, with all of the legislation, all of the, uh, uh, all the surveillance, uh, you know, the uh, uh, TSA, and just everything that's, that's taken place in the past 16, 17 years, um, it's, it's quite enough. Do we really need another event? I, I don't think so necessarily. Uh, but again, it would be, uh, uh, we still have to be vigilant. You know, there's stuff that can happen here. And uh, I don't think it's uh, things that may happen may not be false flags. They may be actual terrorist acts. Yeah, they, they've wound up enough terrorists. They've uh, opened the borders up in Europe. They've opened the bo our southern border up. Let's hope Trump does something about that uh, starting in January 20th when he becomes president of the United States. Adam Curry, thanks for joining us. No Agenda Show. Why don't you tell everybody how they can find your podcast, which I, I might say, by the way, is very excellent. I've listened to several of your episodes already. Well, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, noagendashow.com. It's a podcast. You can find it. If you have a podcast app, just search for No Agenda. Uh, you can go to Google No Agenda, where the, you know, the first five pages probably. Uh, we do it live on Thursdays and Sundays, but again, it's a podcast. Noagendashow.com. Media Assassination, doing it for 888 episodes. And uh, we have a lot of overlap with our audience, so I'm real happy that we've connected. Yeah, definitely. It's, it was great having you on uh, in studio. And uh, we'll be going, just to let everybody know, on January 20th, we'll be going for 14 hours straight here, I think going from 8 a.m. to about 10 p.m., um, so it's going to be quite a day, the day Donald Trump becomes inaugurated as the 45th president of the United States. Thanks for watching the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be right back after this short break. In case you haven't heard, InfoWars has become the most influential media outlet in America. We're making freedom go viral. And now we are proud to announce a new weapon in the epic battle against the globalists. InfoWars Prime. Where you can watch live, high-definition feeds of the Alex Jones Show, plus exclusive insider videos from the InfoWars crew and behind-the-scenes action. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app and download today. InfoWars Prime is available right now for your iPhone or Android. You will have access to exclusive videos that you can't see anywhere else. And that means live coverage of events and breaking news on location as it happens. You can also take advantage of amazing deals from the InfoWars store that are only available for InfoWars Prime subscribers. That's InfoWars Prime at InfoWars.com forward slash app. And if you can hear my voice, you are the resistance. Welcome back. Normally in this extended segment, we cover a variety of news, but we're going to start off with an interview today. You might remember my guest from last week. He's the host of the No Agenda Show, and his name is Adam Curry. All right, thanks for joining us again, Adam Curry uh, from MTV back in the day, and also running his own podcast, which has got 800 and something episodes, uh, the, the No Agenda Show, or it's No Agenda Show. You can find mm -hmm. more information on, on noagenda.com. Now, Adam, uh, first question here. I actually went and listened to the show after you appeared on the Alex Jones Show with Max Kaiser, and you mentioned... You were packing heat. Is that true or false? <laughs> well, let me say, let me just set it up properly because uh, Max and uh, Stacy said, "Oh, you know, 
uh, Alex wants you to come in and, and join us at InfoWars. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and you'll be picked up in the van. I'm like, well, I'm going to get a hood on my head or what's going on? And they said, oh, this guy's walking around. They got, you know, they got weapons everywhere. I'm like, okay, well, maybe we'll just take something along just in case. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was definitely carrying. Um, but uh, I didn't see much. Uh, you guys are very tame. It, it was, uh, wasn't all that bad. Well, I do keep my gun at my desk right here. It's a judge. Oh, and, well, uh, hold yeah, on so. a second. I always have my judge at the desk, obviously. <laughs> it's a great weapon. <laughs> you know what's even better, though, is if you get the, uh, if you get, if you put these in, these are the 410 shotgun shells. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. You put that in. It's very simple. You know, just point in the general direction, like, eh, yeah, over there, bird shot, good. Literally yeah, good. a gun for blind people. I mean, all you have yes, to do is aim in the direction. Averted. Exactly. And you're going to hit it. Always nice to meet a fellow judge old owner. There you actually, Alex came in one day and ha holding a judge and said, you need to go get one of these. So I have one right by my desk at a, a little instant access safe. In fact, there's several of those all around the office. But yeah, we are, are carrying, we have a vault of guns in another oh. room. We're definitely ready for anything that could come uh, in, into the studio at all. I would, well, good. <laughs> I, I, I know where to go when, uh, when it all hits the fan. Yeah, we have storable food too. So we'll, we'll be hey, good. Well, I got some of that. You know, I, I, as I told Alex, I got, you know, early on I was listening to the show, uh, and I got my, my water filter, I got my MREs, I got my one acre crisis garden. I've been, I've been a fan for a long time. Yeah, 